My name's Johnny Crockett, and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about some bits and pieces that Ertzi the Iceman carried all those many hundreds of years ago. In fact, it's not hundreds of years ago, it's thousands of years ago, between uh, 5,000 and 5,500 and years ago. So the sort of things that he used to carry, and if I should take you back a couple of years to those people who came to see us in Bristol, then you may recognize one of these. Uh, now I had eight of these and I was doing an experiment to find out exactly how Ertzi would have carried his charcoal. And the way that we worked it out was that he would take a piece of charcoal and one of these leaves, and he would wrap the charcoal in the leaf. Now, you've got to bear in mind that this leaf was picked in 2019 and it still hasn't crumbled. So he would have taken his charcoal, wrapped it up in the leaves and then placed it in the pot. And when we have a look at the inside of the pot, then we can get some form of an idea as to what the residues were. So we can do a bit of use wear analysis on it. And we can compare that with the original, which is in the South Tyrol Museum of Ar uh, the, the South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology. Other things that Ertzi would have had with him is uh, this, which is a piece of marcasite. It's a um, it's a very uh, iron-based, very ferrous metal uh, rock, and he would have had a piece of flint. So by just knocking the two bits together, sparks are coming off. You may not be able to see that on the uh, on the camera, but um, I could see them and I can also smell it. It's really quite a, in fact, it's a, it's a lovely smell. And to mix that with birch polypore, and now this grows on the birch tree, uh, the um, betula species. So it, it would grow sort of on the trunk like that. Um, and this has been nicely dried out. And if I were just to scrape the surface off, then I would be able to light my fire in the same way as Ertzi lit his by using the marcasite, the flint and the birch polypore. Now we know that he used this because there is an example of this. It, it's actually got a hole which has been drilled in it and there's a piece of fur that goes through. And uh, um, if you have a look at that under a microscope, then you can see that there are tiny, tiny little fragments, microscopic fragments of the marcasite. Now, a lot of what Ertzi had was bound together with this stuff. Now, this is um, this is lime bast. At uh, lime bast, it is uh, it's, it's the inner it's the inner bark of the lime. Uh, it takes a lot of time to prepare it, uh, but once it's made, uh, it is it's a very very strong cordage. And what we've got here, you can see down the down the side there. That is all. Uh, um, made out of lime, as is the uh, the bindings around the bottom there. Uh, so he would have spent a lot of time doing this. Now, in the South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology, there are 77 pieces of lime cordage. Now, interestingly, and this adds to the to the mystery, to the mystique of Ertzi, he has um, some left-handed twisted uh, uh, sections of the lime bast. But he only has 17 the other 60 are all right hand twists. So you've got an, um, uh, an ISZ and, a, and then a, an IZS. But the, the, the combination isn't usual because normally, or most people would twist just the same way every time. If you're right handed, you twist right handed. If you're left handed, you twist left handed. So it does imply that somebody else has provided him with some of his cordage, meaning that he wasn't just the lone person that, uh, that, that was found. He was, he was part of a bigger group of people. Um, also he had with him, and this is something that um, I made last year. This is a replication of Ertzi's uh, uh, ax. This is his ax head, this is bronze. Uh, and uh, yet yeah, this, I've, I've tried using it. It, it, does, it does blunt relatively quickly, but actually it, uh, it, it's pretty robust and better than flint. So uh, from choice, bronze over flint every time. And that there is one last bit that, um, that I've got here and nobody knows what it is. So we've got a bit of dolomite marble at the top and then we've got um, a loop 
can see this this loop just here and there are uh, four knots on it one two three and another one down in there is four so there are four knots and then we've got a number of pieces of and i'm going to take one one of these out um, these nobody knows what they're for they weren't tied on they were twisted and they were so you you can see if I just sort of untwist them a little bit. So they're twisted. They're made of um, of hide. And so they were just held on. Just held on like that. And nobody knows what it was for. So if you've got any ideas, please get in touch and let us know. Because um, the, the the greatest minds that have uh, that, that have set themselves to uh, to Ertzi have not yet worked out what it is. So, although I've given you a bit of information, a bit more information on Ertzi, um, I'd like you to give me a bit of information too. So, if you could contact me, it's Johnny, J O N N Y, at survivalschool.co.uk with ideas as to what this is, then that would be much appreciated. You never know, you may make a massive contribution to Ertzi studies. Thank you very much for listening. And I hope to see you in person next year. Thank you and goodbye.